I'm Dr. Baldeo Singh, nephrologist attached to Georgetown Public Hospital in Guyana, and you're watching Caribbean Medical. And let us just hear from my counterparts in the rest of the Caribbean. Chronic kidney disease, which is impairment of kidney function lasting more than three months, can be caused by diseases such as diabetes and hypertension. Chronic kidney disease affects 850 million people in the world and the most common causes of chronic kidney disease are actually hypertension and diabetes. Kidney disease is becoming quite common in the Caribbean because unfortunately we have an epidemic of chronic diseases, hypertension, diabetes, the main ones and those are the two commonest causes of kidney failure in the Caribbean. But certainly the rate of deterioration is something we could often control quite well with good medical management. And the aim, of course, is to keep people off dialysis and to keep people off transplant. The body is a marvel. The engineering within ourselves is one of the most dynamic and efficient models of creation. Welcome to an all new episode of Caribbean Medical TV. I am Dr. Mariam Abdul-Richards. Today we focus on an area within the blueprint of the human body that is known as the extraordinary filter and has far-reaching functions crucial to our system, the kidney. Join us as we hear from the top Caribbean doctors, professionals and experts in this field right here on Caribbean Medical TV. 12 centimeters or 5 inches, this is the average size of a normal kidney. At first glance, this bean-shaped organ, which is about the size of your fist, might not look very significant, but it is one of our most important organs, the key to healthy, life-sustaining functioning, an important preserver of our health. Projections suggest that kidney disease will increase at an alarming rate among our regional populations. Do you know if you are at risk? Chronic kidney disease affects your immune system you will, because it, what it causes is impairment in how your body responds to bacteria or viruses. That is why we think that a lot of patients with kidney disease died in the COVID pandemic. They have an impaired response or impaired immunity against bacteria and viruses in general. The incidence is the number of new patients per million per year that need dialysis and our calculation came out at over 300 new patients per million per year. From the St. Vincent population perspective, uh, we see hypertension and diabetes really taking a bulk of our patients on dialysis. Of our public population, about 60 to 70 percent of them end up with advanced kidney disease as a result of these two ailments. We also have some patients who are HIV positive, we have some patients who have lupus. We also have patients with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. When I was the head of nephrology services in Barbados, I did look at this data and their rates, and this was a few years ago, this was in 2005 to 2009, their rates were just under 300 new patients per million per year. So the data coming from the Eastern Caribbean is that we have some of the highest rates of kidney failure in the world. Knowing your risk factors is important because kidney disease rarely announces itself. It can come upon you when you least expect it. You should be making regular visits to the doctor whether you feel ill or not, especially if you find yourself at risk. Often when signs and symptoms are appearing, you are already at a late stage of kidney disease. We have an epidemic of diabetes and hypertension in Trinidad and Tobago, and those are the two commonest predisposing factors. There are other things like hereditary kidney disease and other kinds of inflammatory and diseases of the kidney. But diabetes and hypertension are the two major dis kidney destroying diseases. If the patient has these predisposing factors, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol or whatever, they should check with their doctor. 
So the first thing is you need to look at your risk factors. So know your parents, know their, their family history. If they're diabetic, then more than likely you will become diabetic sometime, especially in our population, African, oh, I was African-American and as well as the Indo population. So that's one thing you need to be aware of. So if your parents, especially first line relative, has hypertension or diabetes or any other problem, you should be getting checked up on a regular basis, especially when you hit the 40s you should start getting like yearly checkup. I mean, it should in the 30s as well, but 40s definitely. Um, in terms of other, other things that, you, that should point you to getting a checkup is that your, your habits. So for example, you're not exercising regularly. You think you're putting on weight, especially central obesity, which is basically getting an abdomen or your belly getting big. From them around 2015, I started having pain in my midsection. Um, short bleeding and stuff like that and continue to do like that never to know what was causing it. Over a period of time my wife didn't like to see me like that condition and keep asking me to go to the doctor and I didn't continue to live and lie me and drinking normal run of the mill. The foot started to swell and things like that. I didn't take it on seriously. Then he realized it was retaining liquid and stuff like that. And one day I decided I couldn't take it no more with the lack of energy. Trying to walk up the stairs and no energy and short breathing and stuff like that. I call her and tell her I'm going to check myself to the hospital. And they started to check on it. They gave me some medication for it. And I was discharged after about a week. And I was to come back in about six weeks time. When I went back, Apparently, the medication wasn't working as it should. And there and then, the doctor said, you have to be dialyzed immediately. Now it's about seven years now, eight years since I've been doing this. From the hospital to here. The symptoms of kidney disease is where the problem lies. You can actually get all the way into stage five before you start to experience symptoms. That is why kidney disease needs to be screened and looked for, especially in high-risk groups. What symptoms you might ask you will get in kidney impairment? Early in the disease, there are minimal symptoms. Some persons, as they advance, they start to retain fluid. So their legs getting a little bit um, uh, swollen, they saying their shoes fitting them tighter, their socks now leave a mark on their feet, but lots of things cause swelling of the feet. Heart failure could cause it. Low protein in your blood could cause it. Persons who have kidney disease could have it as well. Persons who have varicose veins can cause um, leg swelling. But it's worthwhile if you see this leg swelling suddenly developing, you contact your physician and have the necessary tests done. All right? Some persons might now be getting tired. That's what you call easy fatigability or you can go up a flight of stairs usually, but you're realizing now that you're getting more winded or you're having some chest pains as you go up the flight of stairs. That is another symptom that your blood count might be low. Blood count, what does that have to do with my kidneys? Well, the hormone called erythropoietin is produced by the kidney. So, if your kidney has significantly decreased its function, so will that erythropoietin level. So your body's ability to make hemoglobin is now reduced. You go off your food, you start to lose weight. The food starts to taste a little funny, almost a little bit metallic. Your skin starts to itch. And those are the symptoms of stage five chronic kidney disease. You may not experience anything apart from tiredness all the way up to stage five chronic kidney disease. Should you not seek help, these symptoms will worsen. You can become drowsy, you can have seizures, you can have life-threatening bleeds from your, from your stomach and your gut. It can cause inflammation around the lining of the heart. Um, so if not attended to, you can actually end up in a life-threatening situation. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for bringing awareness on a topic that can help save so many lives. Coming up, we will hear more from our Caribbean experts. I 
At Guardian Group, we've seen so many of our customers achieve great things. From key moments, when together we've planned for the future, to those unforgettable days, when you've celebrated the rewards of those great decisions. So, it's no surprise that after 175 years, our optimism is stronger than ever. Because when you've partnered with people to achieve their best lives as long as we have, you tend to see the world a little brighter every day. Guardian Group. Live easy. We hope you are finding the information invaluable. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube to see more behind the scenes from today's episode and a sneak preview of upcoming and previous episodes. You are watching Caribbean Medical TV. Discovering that you or a loved one has kidney disease can be a life-changing moment. But there are important steps to take to help preserve health and ensure quality of life. Being educated about your condition is important. For example, it is useful to know how the kidney functions and the role it plays in our survival. So what's really important for us is prevention. And I would say early identification of people with risk factors before they develop, you know, chronic kidney disease. So if we're able to identify it early, we can reduce the rate at which kidney function worsens. So the kidneys is basically the filtering system of your body. It helps to filter all the waste and it helps to maintain something we call homeostasis in the body with your electrolytes and your acid base um, status in your body. So it's very important. Um, what happens is that as there are different stages of kidney disease, so there is from stage one according to the KIDAIO classification to stage five. And as stage one to stage two, most of the time patients are asymptomatic. There's stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five is dead. When the patient's GFR, which you mentioned to me, which is called Globular filtration rate. It means how efficient your kidney is. For the layman, how efficient? So it should be 90 to 100. It's a really good kidney. Then as it comes down and comes down and comes down, it comes down to uh, 70, 60, 50. When it gets down to 30, you have to watch out because if you don't take care of your kidneys, you can go on dialysis. By the time you reach 15 to 10, you need to be dialyzed. So, patients who have high blood pressure, patients who have diabetes, they must get their kidney function checked six monthly or yearly. A young person who presents with heavy protein in the urine is much more likely to become dialysis dependent and develop kidney failure than see an old person who has stage three chronic kidney disease but no protein in the urine. So you must, when you stage kidneys, you use both the level of kidney function as well as the amount of protein in the urine. The level of the kidney function is assessed by a very simple blood test called a creatinine and then we plug that into a very simple equation to estimate your kidney function or it's called estimated GFR and that's how we stage kidney disease. While the medical world has developed groundbreaking treatments to manage kidney disease, the rallying call for all should be prevention. Kidney disease cannot be reversed. As a Caribbean people, we need to stem the tide of the disease and being informed, making changes in lifestyles and learning how to prevent it is the best way forward. Prevention is one of the main things that we should focus on as citizens. And assisting with preventing kidney disease on the long term for patients. We have seen also in a study in Trinidad that over 80% of patients present when their kidneys are failing to a center. And this is an alarming number and this is something that we have to work on for prevention. So prevention, 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 lifestyle diseases, education of the public, and policy making are some of the main areas that we need to target to prevent kidney failure. Even if you have no known risk factors for kidney disease, it is possible to develop kidney disease. 
and the only how you can stop it or prevent it is if you check and you know there is a simple blood test that can be done if we do our physicals at least once a year and get our renal profile checked then we would know where our kidney is at so that we can take steps to either correct anything that is going wrong to prevent it from progressing further or to deal with it before we start having symptoms of ultimate end-stage problems. So you are making an investment in yourself when you t spend the money to test for yourself, to test for it, to identify it early, than waiting until a complication happens and then treating. The physicians, if they pick it up early, can decrease the rate of deterioration of your kidney. So let's say you have you, you have a kidney that's going bad. Your kidney can go downhill, let's say, in a year without proper care. But if you have proper care, your kidney, the rate of deterioration, often we can't reverse it to be perfectly normal again. But certainly the rate of deterioration is something we could often control quite well with good medical management. And the aim, of course, is to keep people off dialysis and to keep people off transplant. Thank you, Professor Narayan Singh. We have seen how important it is to take proactive steps to prevent kidney problems. Stay tuned for more Caribbean Medical TV to hear more about lifestyle changes which can help make a difference to our health. Social investment has always been an integral part of the Republic Group's DNA. The Power to Make a Difference program is the primary mechanism through which we achieve this objective. Republic Bank Guyana Limited has been very involved in our community through our social investment initiative, The Power to Make a Difference. We have partnered with the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports to resuscitate and help develop and build the Steel Pan Fraternity. Recently, we launched a project with CIDA and at the conclusion of this program, 50 youth will get grants to purchase equipment and tools to commence their program. We would have launched Fight for Fun, where boys and girls at a primary school level are able to develop their cricket skill. And this is done in partnership with Cricket West Indies and is executed by the Ghana Cricket Board. The Caribbean is a microcosm for the global stage. Like the rest of the world, we are just as affected by constantly evolving factors in our lifestyle and diet. These modern lifestyle choices have also played a role in the rise of kidney disease. That's why awareness is a key factor and timing is a vital component in this conversation. Visit your doctor regularly, keep track of your habits and the stress factors within. Let's hear more. It's the chronic diseases, it's the lifestyle, so um, we adapt a lot of um, northern or western cultures without the um, systems in place that would assist you in treating them when they become more advanced. So in St. Vincent we have grunk provision and lots of our own starches, but everybody like pasta, all right, and the rice instead of eating local, less processed food, for example. We have an abundance of fruits and vegetables, but now children are coming to school with fruit bowls that have chemicals for the preservation. So what's stopping you from using your own locally grown, grown fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates, breadfruit, um, sweet potatoes, um, instead of Irish potatoes or a lot of the imported um, carbs and grains that we use. Some of the areas citizens can focus on in their everyday lives would include exercise, cutting down on salt, and also cutting down on sugary and sweetened drinks. These are some of the important focus points for prevention. Not just prevention of getting kidney disease, but also prevention of diabetes mellitus and prevention of hypertension. And for those who are already diabetic and have hypertension, these will also aid in better control of these diseases. Foods that are high in phosphorus are things like cheese, 
a lot of our beans are high in phosphorus sodas are very high in phosphorus and phosphorus is not good for the heart it's not good for the bones so it's really important for our kidney patients to restrict the amount of phosphorus they take in their diet potassium is another one unfortunately as your kidneys get impaired they lose the ability to handle and get rid of your potassium and therefore people with more advanced chronic kidney disease cannot safely drink coconut water. So it's important to talk about your diet and know that with exercise there is a reduction in both your blood sugar as well as your blood pressure. With, with just exercise alone you can reduce like five to seven of this systolic blood pressure um, per day. So if you do like aerobic exercises three sessions per week, 30 minutes. And most people in Guyana say that, you know, doctor, I am exercising, I walk up and down the stairs, I do my chores, but that's not exercise. That's just your daily activity. Exercise is when you go up and above and you increase your heart rate, you do aerobic activities, and it's about 30 minutes of constant walking or riding a bicycle or whatever exercise that you plan on doing. But it should, you should be doing something similar to that. A stage three person can reduce their risk by doing the what right is necessary, things. by doing the right things. Losing weight, diet, exercise, monitoring to reduce progression because you can stop it where it is, but you can't go from stage three to stage two or stage one. But you can stop three from becoming four and five. When you reach five, there's no going back to four, but five is just five, it's there. You have end stage renal, eventually you will require dialysis or a transplant. While chronic kidney disease cannot be reversed, modern medicine has discovered ways to treat it and improve the lives of patients. Dialysis is one of the most common treatments for people with advanced stages of kidney disease. So there was research conducted in Trinidad and Tobago with Professor T. Luxing and myself and my other colleagues where we looked at kidney failure and the types of modalities that a person can be started on with kidney failure. So these include transplant, hemodialysis, and peritoneal dialysis. One of the most miraculous ways to improve the lives of advanced stage kidney patients is transplantation, when patients can receive a healthy kidney and start a new phase of their lives. We started though doing live related transplants and for the first 15 years or so we did only from living to living. Usually from a sibling to a sibling, brother to sister, sister to sister, etc. Sometimes parent to child or child to parent. And so they were live related donors and live related donors carry generally a better a better um, survival rate because we get more time to match them perfectly. They are generally better matches because they're siblings of the same genes and so on. So we actually um, get excellent results with live related. If the donor is related to you and a close relative, it is much better. So they decided to test my children. So. Only my girls, my girl children had my blood type, which is important that they must have the same blood group as the recipient. We tested the first daughter, and the first daughter was a perfect match, and we eventually did the transplant with our daughter. It just gives you an all wrong quality of life that dialysis does not. Because all dialysis does is filter your blood either through the machine, hemo, or through the tummy with the peritoneal dialysis. But that just keeps you alive. It doesn't improve your quality of life. It doesn't put you back to almost where you were before. So I am happy that I am able to provide this service that I have been able to provide for the last 15 years. I've done three from St. Vincent, we've done two from Dominica, we've done one from Barbados. So I found out that I had end-stage renal disease while I was still a medical student. 
and at that time I commenced hemodialysis. I, I was in the UK at that time. I returned to Grenada, continued hemodialysis, but there were a lot of issues. And at times when I could not get dialysis in Grenada, I had to travel to Trinidad to get it. There I commenced peritoneal dialysis as an alternative to hemodialysis. And as we said, last year I received a kidney transplant. So for the last nine years, I have been both a doctor and a patient at the same time. It has been an interesting journey. Well, those of you who have kidney failure, remember it's not a death sentence. The results of transplant are excellent in Trinidad and Tobago, probably run about something like a 97% success rate with live-related transplants. And um, therefore you have nothing to fear. It's quite safe and it's just your job to find a good donor. And stage renal disease is something that you can live with. There is treatment for it and we're all here to help each other. Thank you, Dr. Bristol. And we will hear more about that journey in a later episode. It was really interesting chatting with you in Grenada. For more information on today's program, please be sure to follow us on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook, where we will have more content from today's episode and more. Thank you to all our doctors in today's program. With a miracle that is the human body, there is always something new on the horizon. Later on in this series, we will hear from our experts about other life-saving options, dialysis and kidney transplant. I am Dr. Mariam Abdul-Richards. See you soon on our next episode of Caribbean Medical TV. Being aware of your body, empowering yourselves as women and ensuring that we do what is best for us. If we don't look after ourselves, we cannot take care of our families and our husbands and our workforce. So we need to be able to take us, become priority and do what's right for us so then we could take care of you. Common gynecological problems that women come to see a gynecologist for is for vaginal infection, for contraception, for heavy periods. Some of the causes of heavy periods are fibroids and adenomyosis. So if anybody who has heavy periods, they should come to a gynecologist to check for this. Usually younger women, we're looking for risk categories and things we need to address. And then older women, you're looking for more in the pathologic diseases, things of that nature. And screening is actually the biggest reason why we need to see everyone annually. Mm -hmm.